we have you know equivalence of fighter controllers in different countries you know we call it fighter controller i think you know some other countries call it air defense controllers and things like that what what are these you know nomenclature you know different nomenclatures in different countries i think you mentioned in the book uh, if you could elaborate yes the the role is fighter controlling because the the very name suggests that you control the fighter missions uh, like i've said so that is why fighter controllers so the fighter controller is a, is a basic the thing what is known so fighter controlling is per se this and those who are doing this are the fighter controllers in our uh, this thing we call it fighter controllers we, we have seen in our present conflict uh, we we uh, in in pakistan and in bangladesh they are called air defense weapon controllers in other uh, places some places they are called weapon controllers so like there are there are different uh, nomenclature uh, from different different countries but there is one very peculiar about the indian air forces this is the only air force in the world where you have a dual role you know like you are primarily into the administration uh, branch wherein then you uh, take on the role of the air traffic controller and the fighter controllers and uh, then you know in your prime uh, for good about 20 odd years you remain in the operational stream and then thereafter you take on the administrative uh, role this does not happen in any other air force everywhere else this is the primarily they they are stuck to only this role then they move out okay so there are different concepts you no know, sector operation center air defense direction center etc etc and you know things have evolved over a period of time to the present you know integrated air command and control system iaccs which has been perhaps the talk of the whole world post operation sindur so if you could just uh, trace the history of you no know, different organizational setups like i said it it started with the doubting system where uh, primarily what they had is they they had and they had divided the entire country into the sectors and uh, then they established a sector operations control center from where have the radars deployed they would have the aircraft deployed they would have the guns deployed they would have the balloon barrage deployed so basically soc was within a defined sector a geographical sector uh, that was the headquarter which was now coordinating all air defense activities in that area you were getting pick up uh, um, pick up input from all the radars then uh, you were accordingly uh, assigning uh, that based on the the track behavior you were classifying them whether they are hostile or friendly and then uh, engaging them either with uh, those time ad guns because surface to air missiles were not uh, then basically either with ad guns or with the fighter aircraft so similar concept we also took when initially we established our air defense uh, this thing so we were also on the similar soc kind of uh, this thing there was a adoc on top and then uh, there was a soc uh, which later moved on to the concept of air defense direction center so we started renaming uh, those and uh, the same socs uh, thereafter then came the air defense direction center concept which was the primarily responsible for a given in a, in a given sector then within the uh, addc in around 71 there is a bad sea concept also came which was again part of within the addc but the base air defense uh, center concept also came in where you gave around 40 kilometers and in some cases around 25 kilometers depending on what is the weapon defending that base you gave that bad zone that within that zone they were responsible for taking on any any threat that would happen and the addc was uh, doing everything that was outside uh, those uh, badc similarly then there there was a concept of which is still is the joint air defense uh, center which is for the tba where in the army uh, weapon systems were deployed and that area was under jadc but overall coordination remained with the addc what is this tba tactical battle area is a forward area where the battle is contact battle is happening basically between the ground armies so tactical battle area is where the ground maneuvers are generally taking place where your deployment of your army is in that area so we keep that area in mind when we are planning our uh, attack profiles when we are planning our offensive missions when we are planning our, our uh, air defense missions so idea is that that and in that tba then the joint air defense centers are established for the air defense of that area 
so so within a overall thing of a addc then you have a jad c operating you have the bad c operating and overall on top of that is the addc which is coordinating all this so even in the jad c all those control orders that have to go to the you know um, weapon systems of army has to be coordinated with the addc because addc is primarily coordinating all airspace management entire airspace management so some sort of autonomy is given to the jadc but prime coordinator will be the addc in present context that is that is what the iaccs is now doing from the iaccs uh, node it has now become much more integrated uh, see, because now the technology has uh, come in all your sensors airborne or ground based are integrated and uh, you get a combined picture something known as which is recognizable uh, air situation picture and based on which all tactical decisions are taken based on which uh, your offensive missions or defensive missions or ad missions or all other missions are uh, coordinated so this picture uh, becomes very very crucial because the process after the detection then the identification is the one of the major function of air defense which is done in this addc erstwhile addc and now iaccs node so that is a very complex process by itself because you have to be sure that the aircraft that you are going to engage is in in fact a hostile aircraft or enemy aircraft and not your uh, own friendly because the air space is contested in the same air space your own aircrafts are also operating where the enemy aircrafts are also operating where the uh, other uh, it has become more complicated because you have the missiles you have the artillery long range artillery also same uh, space now you have uh, drones which are also now coming in the same space so the entire air space is contested with the enemies and your own aircraft and therefore before you engage any of this airborne platform projectile you have to be very sure that you are actually not engaging your own so this identification becomes very very uh, crucial and uh, the iaccs in present uh, context does this uh, overall so i'll say it is a mother system within which all other systems then would function including the weapon systems that are integrated with it shared your experience of you, know, you were also instrumental in developing and operationalizing besides agencies or many other could you just elaborate on the kind of you know how this development has taken place very briefly this is again uh, detail in my book how uh, challenge of iaccs development was how our uh, very very uh, senior people uh, from late 90s uh, onwards that we had uh, started talking about the development of iaccs and then whole lot of technical officers and Uh, fighter controllers who were uh, part of it over the period of time it started late 90s until about uh, so we while i was there between 2008 and 10 uh that was the time when the the system was finally went into the development phase along with the bell and many other agencies then we did so we we had uh, this is something a very very successful model in, uh, that has happened in the development there was a entire uh, team of technical officers and fighter controllers who were working alongside uh, the bell scientists that means everything that was required to be made Uh, so we were part of it our our engineering officers were also part of the finding solution of whatever we were trying to uh, you know develop and it was a it was a humongous software development program so we as a fighter controllers while our primary role was uh, that we have to make sure that every line of software that is written is really well understood by the engineers so at the at the end of the day i think we learned a whole lot of software development and the bell engineers and other engineers learned lot of fighter controlling so i i jokingly used to say that you know we have this categorization amongst the fighter controllers so i would always uh, tell that the bell controllers at the bell engineers by the time we finished iaccs were almost like a cadby fighter controllers in 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 terms of their understanding so that was the kind of uh, work that happened because and for us also like every single line of software that was written in that uh, entire system we had to understand we had to understand the complexities of software development so we also became you know like a software um, engineers as well so this is one of the very very successful model uh, and because of uh, this he developed a system in almost less than 1000 times the cost that we would have paid outside in open market so this totally indigenously developed system that's what i understand absolutely absolutely